Futures TV show, sponsored by CME Group and Trade Station. Hey everybody, welcome to Futures TV show. In this episode, I'll be speaking with one of my favorite traders, Mike Agney. I'll also be talking to Danny Hoffman Sitlow and Julian Mula of Red Sky Software. Welcome to the world of futures. Thanks for being here, my oh, yeah. friend. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. I'm excited to speak with you. Um, Mike, you were a fixed income trader for one of the top futures trading firms in the world, and you've since moved on. What are you up to these days? Yeah, so I started out at Transmarket Group, spent 12 years there, and now I'm working on Magna Libra, which is a commodity trading advisor. Talk to us a little bit about Magna Libra. So Magna Libra, um, I wanted to bring to the marketplace a product where I could offer what I've learned and the skills that I've honed trading uh, in the fixed income arbitrage space and into uh, the commodity trading advisor world. So Magna Libra, the product I offer, trades a long short program. Long short program. And something that you talked to me about uh, the other day, you said, you know what, Anthony, you know what I'm up to right now? I'm working on, I'm gonna read this, relative value discretionary <laughs> systematic. A lot of, a lot a lot of powerful of, words yeah, in there, Mike. Yeah, Talk to of, us about that. A lot of key words. Um, yeah. Okay, so the way I define relative value is uh, you take uh, two separate products, let's just say 30 years and the five year, and you look at historical values through various interest rate regimes from our central banks, and you try to historically value where those, where those spreads are, and that's what I, I deem relative value. So I use historicals to relative value two separate products. So it's two separate products, just one system. One value against the other, and just see how the historicals match up through different uh, environments. So talk to us a little bit more about the systematic and the discretionary side of it. Okay, so Magna Libra doesn't utilize algorithmic trading. It may be somewhere in the future, but as for now, we're discretionary. So that means I have full control of the e entries and exits. But systematically, they can be entered automatically, but I have control over them, when they happen and how they happen. So that's kind of how I merge the two, um, because you know, as you know now, everything's all high-frequency algorithmic trading, so in order, execution is key. So you still need to have some sort of systematic processes in there in order to, you know, you don't want to give up too much you know, slippage. I can, yeah, I can relate to that, Mike, because I, I consider myself a hybrid trader because my, my strategy is systematic because it gives me, it alerts me the signals that I want to see, mm -hmm. but it's discretionary in how I'm going to execute them. Some of them I might trade bigger, some of them I might trade smaller, and sometimes I might say, hey, hey I'm not going to trade this one, there's a Fed announcement, there's right. something going on. Right, so right. I like that um, you're also doing something similar. So yeah. you, you said execution is key, right? And you know, yeah, absolutely. you know that I believe that execution is the most important part of any strategy. Right. How do you implement what you just talked about to a strategy? Well, you have to, there, there's certain proprietary processes that we use to define like optimal levels um, without going deeper into those. It's, it's basically, we have filters. So we kind of, if we have to execute, we know where the optimal time to be executing is. And so we have different processes that will filter that and then we decide, like the discretionary will take over and say, well, is this, is this even though it's telling us this is the right, is it right? You know, so it's kind of like yeah. a check and balance. But so I want to merge that systematic with discretionary because I don't, Maybe it's the control freak in me, but I can't just let a computer do everything. Like I need to know that there's some control there on my part. Yeah, that's been the biggest hurdle for me, being a discretionary trader, even when I found that systematic strategy that I really liked, just let me go. Yeah, it's tough. It, 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 it really is tough. And because I know you pretty well now, you've been on the podcast yeah. and we talk quite often and I read all your stuff, which is great. You're always long and short. Yeah. You're never just long, right? or you're never just short. Well, I shouldn't say that because there's timing, right? Yeah. So there's timing of trades. Everything's not, it could be automated, long, short, but generally what that means is I, I like limiting my risk in that manner. So for instance, I, one of my trades, I'll, I'll do S&P NASDAQ, but I'll be long the S&P and short the NASDAQ, something like that. So that's when I, I term long, short. I think it allows me a little more flexibility in the risk reward parameters, um, not being stuck where if a market's just tanking and I'm long. I at least have some hedge on the other side. And that's one of the things where my arbitrage skills have really come into play. Um, you know, it, it's we were always either long or short cash and long or short futures. And so that's really what I wanted to bring to Magna Libra was that, that type of mentality. Do you feel that by you being long and short is your edge? 
Yeah, I think on a risk element, it definitely gives me an edge of, of control. Um, I do miss out on some alpha. Let's just say if you know you're an outright trader, you're gonna if you're long and then we go up, obviously you're gonna generate a lot more alpha than I would. But I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for inside my relative value I have parameters and I'm going long or short both these products and hoping that this spread widens or narrows depending on my position. So it's really a spread. Long short is spreading. It's like a spread trade. You really do have a unique approach, Mike, and I love it. What do you say that you and I head over to the desk and go over some trades? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, everybody. Next up, Julian Mula from Red Sky Software will join us over at the desk and we're going to start looking at some trades. Stay tuned. This is my headquarters. This is where I trade and manage my portfolio. Since I added futures, I have access to the oil markets and gold markets. Okay. I'm plugged into equities, trade confirmed. And I have global access 24 seven, meaning I can do what I need to do. Then I can focus on what I wanna do. Visit learnfuturestoday.com to see what adding futures can do for you. Welcome back, everybody. I'm joined by Julian Mula from Red Sky Software and, of course, Mike Agney. Mike, we're going to talk about some trade setups, but before we do, I know that you look at the fundamental picture as long as, as, long as the technical. Right. And you talk and write a lot about what's going on fundamentally in the market. Yes. So let's start there with your QE forever, which you've been talking about for quite some time. Yeah, Anthony, I've been talking about the central bank policies for over a decade, uh, ever since they overtook the markets in 2008 with their TARP. So I came up with this mantra. I usually put a hashtag before it, but QE forever, because this is, this is what's driving our markets today. And we can go into what's the data behind this, right? So why would I use QE forever? Well, we can see in 2008 when the central banks basically took over all the markets by increasing their balance sheets. And you can see in 2008 how the Federal Reserve went from under one trillion to just a little bit right near four trillion today. And they tried to you know, ease their balance sheet a little bit after 2016, but all they did is you can see how the red line dipped, but the blue and the green, which is, represents the ECB and BOJ, they just basically took over. So they didn't really cut back anything that other central banks just took over for them. So when we look at this even further, we can, we can chart the S&P 500 against the global central bank balance sheets, and you can see the nice linear fit that, that the market exhibits. As the central bank's balance sheets expand, the S&P 500 market rises. And that's kind of where the situation where we continue to find ourselves in, and the central banks think that they can reduce their balance sheets and, and raise rates, but they really can't. Now, Mike, I love reading about fundamentals but it all comes down to execution, right? So yeah. I've seen a lot of charts that look similar to this. Mm -hmm. And to me, everybody could say, well, you know what? Just because what, the, what QE has been, uh, what QE is doing, you should just be long the S&P. But it, it's, it, that's not necessarily the way that traders go about their business, right? So right. what trades, because I know you trade long and short, right. are coming of from, from these fundamentals that you were just talking about. Well, I think you're right, and that's why passive index funds have also gained a lot of traction, right? So because everybody thinks they can just be long only, but we know in the real world that that's not true. Um, so some of the trades we like to look at are the U.S. Treasuries, the five-year through 30-year sector, um, looking for spread trades there, as well as the metals. You know, we're going to see that they drive the metal, metal pricing as well. Mike, take us to the next chart that you wanted to show us. This one was interesting to me because you sent it to me the other day and you're like, Anthony, just take a look at this. And I said, well, we, we should talk about this in the what show. What is it saying? Yeah, talk to us about it. Uh, yeah, this chart's from Capital Prism. Um, what it's basically showing is th with the QE policies that they've enacted, you can see where the, the share of the wealth of, of income is going to. And it, back in the 1930s, you can see how high the income level disparity was. And we're seeing it today. So these are all systemic issues of central bank QE forever policies. Great stuff, Mike, with the fundamentals. Now, yeah. I know you use technicals, too. So yeah. in the next segment, I want to go over some trade setups with you because, as we all know, execution's everything, right? right. You can't just look at these things and say, oh, hey, this is uh, what's going to happen in the market. You right. have to actually go and trade it. Absolutely. So talk to us about some of the markets that you're going to be uh, discussing with us in trades off of these fundamentals. Yeah, I think a couple of trades we'll go over are gold, silver. We'll go over euro currency versus Swiss franc. And then we'll do a look at uh, the NASDAQ at first, the S&P. All right, looking forward to it. And also some alerts coming from Red Sky Software with Julian. Stay tuned, everybody. Why trade futures with TradeStation? 
you can trade over 80 products from home, work, or on the go with a powerful, easy to use interface and prices that let you focus on padding your wallet, not emptying it. Upgrade your trade at tradestation.com. Why trade with TradeStation? It's innovative, easy to use, and totally freaking sweet. With powerful tools to track and execute your trades and low per trade commissions on stocks, futures, and options. Upgrade your trade at tradestation.com. This is my headquarters. This is where I trade and manage my portfolio. Since I added futures, I have access to the oil markets and gold markets. Okay. I'm plugged into equities, trade confirmed. And I have global access 24 seven, meaning I can do what I need to do. Then I can focus on what I wanna do. Visit learnfuturestoday.com to see what adding futures can do for you. Welcome back everybody. I'm joined by Julian and Mike. Mike, let's talk about some trades. Great explanation on the setup and the fundamentals. Let's talk some technicals and let's take a look at some of the trades that you're in. Let's start off with this uh, Euro Swiss spread. Okay, uh, Anthony, as you know, we like to look at long short trades and this is one of them that we, we keyed on early this year. So this is the Euro versus Swiss franc and this is the spread between the price difference of the futures. And we like to use the, the, the 200 period VWAP as kind of our magnet, kind of our mean reversion uh, for this trade. Here, we're gonna overlay the Euro currency in yellow with the white line background of the spread. Now, there was an ECB meeting on January 24th, and you can see from the yellow line, the decline from January 5th on down to the ECB meeting where um, Draghi tries to tell us that they can uh, not, you know, lower interest rates any longer and not continue with QE, but we all know the truth. It's QE forever, right? Yep. yep. So, um, so they did a little roll tack maneuver and the, the, the Euro currency went higher and the spread widened out to 1425, as you can see denoted by the nearly double top being placed up there around uh, January 30th. Um, so what we were looking at is, this spread broke out from 1250 to 1350, and now it's trading to a wide of 1425, 26. So our thought process is, well, this is kind of a little bit overdone. Do we have any other indicators that will tell us that maybe getting short the Euro versus Swiss franc would make sense? Well, you can see that the Euro currency actually declined first before this spread started to decline. So we looked at the Euro currencies weakening up, but it, the Swiss franc hasn't really gained any ground yet. So we thought that this was a good entry for this trade. Um, and you can see where our target, we placed uh, 100 uh, ticks below there, which would, uh, is denoted by the green tag there at 1326. Now we do have some proprietary indicators of why we picked that number. It, it is, does, does sound nice being 100 full ticks, um, but there are some other uh, filters that do go into that. A few questions I have for you, Mike. First is, because you're always long and short, are you legging into this stuff or are you getting it all at once? Yeah, sometimes we do. Sometimes the execution goes our way from the get-go. We can lag a little bit, and that's one of the one of the you know positives about being discretionary. I mean, you can build that into an algo, but once again, I don't like giving up that control. I like to trade what I see. Stops. When you have a long and a short on, how do you know where you're wrong in that trade? Yeah, it's it's well, it's kind of the same, right? So most people, when they use stops, it, it's they're long one thing or short one commodity, whereas we were binary, so we, we have a spread on, so we're long and short both. So even with that spread, you still have levels, right? It either narrows or widens, and those are, you know, we have certain levels that we know where we're wrong, and then we have to figure out, you know, based upon our risk parameters and reward parameters, when are we wrong, and you have to act on it. Last question before I get to Julian and look at some alerts. The 200 VWAP, is that just standard 200 back, or do you anchor it from a specific moment it, that you want to see what's happening. Yeah, I use multiples. I use the 50, 100, and 200 period. They're kind of like uh, like the 50, uh, 100, 200 moving average as well. I like to use the VWAP because it's a volume weighted average price. So I, I use it more as a, a magnet and trying to, where most algos will use it, like, I think as a mean reversion tool. And you see that on a shorter time period, but we're not trading, sh we're not in the milliseconds, microseconds. We're in a little bit more longer time frame. But right. it does help. Uh, you know, getting us, you know, to a certain point of focusing on a, a certain level. That VWAP does help. Perfect. And I'm curious, Julian, are you seeing any red sky alerts uh, 
maybe that are coinciding with the trade that Mike has on right now with the Euro Swiss? Great question, Anthony. For example, Euro FX traded above the 20 day moving average. This historically has been a very bullish indicator on the short term from one to two hours after this event, as well as in the long term from one to five days after. That's very interesting, Julian. Thank you for sharing that with us. Mike, I like to use these alerts for confirmation in my trading. I've been looking at this red sky quite a bit lately and to see if it's aligning with anything that, uh, that I'm doing. Do you use confirmations like these types of alerts in your trading? Yeah, we have some proprietary indicators, although these are they're pretty significant. I, I like red sky's work here. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Let, let's talk about the next trade that you have, and that's the S&P NASDAQ. Um, going to be interesting to see how you're long yeah. one and short one or the other. I'm curious to see which one you're long and which one you're short. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you the parameters that we use in the next chart here. All right, so here, Anthony, we can see we've got the NASDAQ versus the S&P, and this spread we show in dollars. And once again, you can see my VWEP 200 period up there. Um, so here's what we do. When we go long short, we, we have to define our, our parameters. And, you know, I learned this early on at Transmarket Group. We had a great head of trading there that taught me this. Um, he's like, you need to define your areas first. Like markets go up, they go down. But you, if you're not, you don't want to get beat up by those in-between runs, right? So he's like, you need to find and define where your exits and entries are. So I, I set up these trend channels and, and I try to define, like we have to have an opinion as traders, right? You have to have conviction. You know, there, there's no waffling around. You either, and, and Magna Libra does the very simple things. We, we buy, sell, or do nothing. We don't complicate it any more than that. So what this, what this chart shows is it kind of gives us our zone of where we want to sell the, the NASDAQ for the, versus the S&P and where we want to buy the NASDAQ versus the S&P. Now, it's not as glitzy as doing an outright, and you're not going to generate as much alpha, but we feel like risk adversity is, is, is paramount. So that's why we do these binary trades. Thanks for sharing that, Mike. Great stuff. Julian, any alerts uh, that you're seeing right now on Red Sky for the NASDAQ or the S&P? Great question, Anthony. For example, E-mini S&P was down 1%. This has happened 57 times over the last year, and it has been a consistent bearish indicator for what happens to E-mini S&P price over the next hours to days. Very cool, Julian. Thank you so much. Next up, Mike, let's talk about this gold and silver trade you were in. As you can see from the chart here, another spread that we'd like to look at is the gold future versus the silver future. And you can see the outperformance of gold since, you know, basically the middle of 2018. And we've, we've come up to a, a, the prior high, didn't make a double top, actually broke through it. And now we're looking like maybe that, that move was kind of to get everybody out, blew them out at the top there. So now we're looking at Will silver overtake gold and revert back down? And you can see the little the colored bars below, step below there. Those are just Fibonacci levels that we like to look at as possible areas of support if we do start to break down. Now, one good thing that this chart does do for us is that it, it allows us to say, if we want to go short silver versus gold, we kind of know where our out is. It's got to be pretty close here because if we start to trade above that 54098, we're kind of going to believe we're wrong and that there's more to this fundamentally, which there may be considering QE forever as well. We don't want to ever be short gold in that, that respect. But on this chart versus silver, it's looking a little frothy. Um, so this is our level that we're kind of keen right now, this is the 53163. If we get below there, we're going to start to, you know, put on positions and, and say, you know, with general confidence that the top is in. And we'd rather be long silver as opposed to gold in this respect. Uh, but we do this, this trade versus, you know, we, we can pick any metal that, you know, gold versus copper, silver versus copper, you know, in, in that instance. But this is the chart we, re, we are really focusing in on now. Okay, so this is an anticipation moment that you're looking at with this spread. You're not currently in this trade. Yeah, no, we currently do have a trade on in this spread the way that it sits. We are long silver and short gold currently, but our level to watch is 53163. We will start to add on if we get below that level, but our out you know, is going to be somewhere close to where, where that 54098 is right now. Gotcha. So our risk reward is, is asymmetrical here. We know we're getting out, you know, we could get, you know, taken out if the market starts to rise, gold starts to outperform, but generally we're looking for more confirmation below uh, 53163. 
which is what kind of separates us from CTA trend followers. Um, we, we, we're not actually waiting for like that trend to actually transpire and then get in. We like to kind of anticipate, you know, use a little bit, um, you know, of our proprietary indicators to tell us that uh, a, a trade has gone too far that perhaps maybe it's time to uh, take a look at it. You mentioned looking for more confirmation. And like I've been saying all show, I've been using Julian Gear Red Sky software alerts for confirmations just in trends. It's been a great alert for me in my trading, seeing what's happening. So let's see what's happening in gold and silver or any other metals. For example, when silver traded below the 50 day moving average, historically, the market continued to drop from one hour to five hours later after this happened. And uh, the last year, 10 out of 16 times, it has followed this pattern. Yeah, you know, that's very interesting. And Julian, thank you so much. Mike, I've been using these alerts a lot. And, and thank you again, Julian, for coming on the show and, and, and showing these. It's a great free tool to where when I wake up in the morning, part of my process has been seeing if any of the markets that I'm trading is breaking out about, about, breaking out above or below these moving averages. Mm -hmm. Mike, do you use any sort of automation or things like this in your trading to, to give you that, those confirmations? Yeah, absolutely. I think any trader should have data analytics in their repertoire just to enhance the precision of their entries, exits, or their overall trading fundamentally and technically. I think this is, this is huge. Awesome. Mike, I can't thank you enough for everything you shared thank with you. us today. Julie and you as well. Next up, everybody, we're going to talk to an energy practitioner that's going to help us with stress reduction. Stay tuned. Why trade futures with TradeStation? You can trade over 80 products from home, work, or on the go with a powerful, easy to use interface and prices that let you focus on padding your wallet, not emptying it. Upgrade your trade at TradeStation.com. Why trade with TradeStation? It's innovative, easy to use, and totally freaking sweet with powerful tools to track and execute your trades and low per trade commissions on stocks, futures, and options. Upgrade your trade at TradeStation.com. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Mike Agney and Danny Hoffman Sitlow, energy practitioner, and we're going to talk about stress reduction. Danny, yes. you come from a family of traders. <laughs> I mean, I've known you for a long time. Oh, yeah. You're married to a trader. You were a trader, and your father was one of my mentors, one of my coaches. Yep. So you know about traders as well as anybody yes. and the stress we go through. Talk to us about some, some steps that we could do to help with stress reduction. So as a practitioner, if a trader was coming into my office, the first thing I would say to them is you have to be grateful, grateful to opportunity. Not many of us are, you know, we're um, anomalies. We're not like everybody. We're of a different breed. And so we need to be grateful that we are able to do this. We're able to watch the markets. We're able to sustain this level of stress and intensity throughout the day. So first and foremost, gratitude. Right, that you're grateful for this opportunity. The second thing I would say to them is, do you guys have your rules and regulations? Our yes. Trading rules. Yes. Yeah. Own, yeah. Yes. Personal rules, right? Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. All right, so you have these rules. We'll take it a next step further and write down a mantra. Right. So in 2009, I went, to, I went back to go trade for myself again because I still thought I was the greatest <laughs> trader ever, right? And so at that time, though, I also took an oath, a spiritual oath for myself, and that was to let go of the fear, let go of the worry, be grateful, of course, for the blessings in my life, and then also to stay connected to myself so I don't let the anxiety, I don't let the frustration get a hold of me throughout the day. And then lastly, I'm kind to myself, kind to myself in my thoughts, kind to myself, in my words and definitely kind to myself in my actions because uh, we all know when we have a bad day yeah. what we have our tendencies to do when we're done with the day so I would say those are the first two things and then the third thing I would say is 
you know, if you can't do these things by yourself to reduce your stress, if you're not going to a yoga class, if you don't have a meditative practice, I would say seek out your team of people who can help facilitate that space for you, the quiet, the recentering, that come back to that homeostasis within your body and yourself so that you can have energy to come back to the, the next day, right? And let alone, you know, your second trade first kind of thing, right? You want to come back tomorrow. Absolutely. And even further going out, you want to retire, right? So the first and foremost is to learn how to reduce that stress. Remember when we were uh, first starting trading, you and I, back in the day, and everyone said, make sure you can come back tomorrow? Yeah. And it wasn't just for trade and risk management, it's for health. Totally. And, Absolutely. And you have figured this out, Danny, and you, you mentioned mantra. Talk to us a little bit more about that. Mantra is just your core values that you live by. So I believe in myself, right? Your rules look like what? Like, do you remember one of your rules? Or trading rules yeah. or personal rules? We'll start with <laughs> trading rules. Well, one of my first trading rules I always use before I enter a trade is defining my risk. So I always want to know, kind of parameterize what the trade looks like, setting it up on the exit or entry and the exit. For me, because I'm, I, I know when to be aggressive, because yeah. I'm always aggressive. So in my mind, I'm always thinking to myself instinctually, don't be aggressive all the time. Know when that time is, is ready to be aggressive. Yeah, so that's great. So now core values, your personal rules, what are those? Do you have one? Oh, well, I'm, I'm a, I stick true to my faith. That's one of my core rules. I think that gives me, allows me a little bit of meditation as well. And um, that certainly helps. Yeah. Trading is... Uh, it's not always physical. It used to be in the pit, but now it's mental. So Absolutely. you're meant when you get mentally tired, it affects not only your trading but everything in life. Absolutely. So put that with your trading rules, right? I can connect it to my faith. Yeah. Right. Right. How about you? Oh, yeah. for me, it's 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 creating balance in my life. That's been the number one goal I've had for several years now is creating that balancing act to to being a trader, but also. Uh, doing things to, to, to balance out that life. And I, 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 one thing I, I think is, is wrong when people say work hard, play hard. It actually should be work hard, play easy. So this way you could balance it out right. because right. what we do is we work so hard at it that in, in the first 15 years of my career, I didn't really have that balance. Right. I wanted everything hard. And balance comes with so many factors, right? So what is that balance? What type of balance are you looking for during that day? That becomes your mantra. I stay balanced. So I'm not getting too overexcited in the market, and I'm not getting too in the dumps when it doesn't go my way or I didn't take advantage of the opportunity, right? I shoulda, woulda, couldas. Mm -hmm. You'd stop those, right? So that's a part of your mantra. I stay connected to myself and what I want to do as it relates to my rules, right? They're just short sentences, just like your rules, but more towards your personal values. Now, Danny, I'm very uh, goal-oriented, so I need to have a short-term goal. That's how I work. Yeah. That's how I operate. Give all of the traders listening out there the first step they can make to start working on their mantra. A piece of paper and a pen, right? Even a trading card. You know, you take out your trading card, you take your pen, okay, what do I believe in throughout the day? What's going to get me through the day that my rules, what will supplement my rules? What will help me stick to my rules, right? Uh, I, I agree, Danny. I love it. And I love how you said pen to paper, because I've talked about this a lot already on this show. There's that mind connection. Totally. When you write something down, you stick to it, I think, a little bit better than if you type it. Yeah. I mean, I do, you know, you've talked about journals in the past, you know, and I write to myself through the computer. It's easier for me to do that, right, to write little notes to myself and journal, you know, on a daily basis. But as far as mantras go and as far as rules go, you should always see those rules because trading is a total mind Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, Danny, but. this was awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, Mike, thanks. you as well. Thank Everybody you. out there, be sure to catch all the episodes on futurestvshow.com. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. See you next time. Remember throwing the car in? Yeah. Yay. See if I can <laughs>